My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. In this episode, we shall be dealing with progression. And Jam expects you to know arithmetic and geometric progression. This is a very, very easy topic in Jam and in mathematics. For arithmetic progression, these three formulas will do for you. For geometric progression, these three formulas as well are okay for you. Then, you need to remember simultaneous equation and you need a little touch of common sense. With these requirements, you are good to go. Progression means to progress, to move up, to change, to take steps. If you choose to progress this way, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, or you choose to progress this way 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or you choose to progress this way. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Any of these three ways you choose, you will notice something. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. If you choose this way, 4 minus 2 is 2, 6 minus 4 is 2, 8 minus 6, that should be 2, and 10 minus 8 is 2. If you choose this way, 3 minus 1 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, 7 minus 5 is 2, this should be 2, this should be 2. You notice that there is a common difference. The second minus the first is the same thing as the third minus second, and so on. So, each of the progression, they differ by a constant number. And that constant number is referred to as common difference. Common difference, D. In progression, you also deal with series and sequences. Series is simply arrangement where they have particular properties, or there is a difference between them. And if you look at each of the values here, there is a first number. This one is the first number, two is the first number here, one is the first number here. So the first number is referred to as first thing. And each of them here, there is a last number. The last number is last term. A first term is A, and common difference is D. If in a progression, I choose to go this way, I say 2, I say 4, I say 8, and I say 16, and I say 32. In this case, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4, 16 minus 8 should give me 8 if I am still okay. 32 minus 16 should give me 16. That's if you are doing something right. This is quite different from here. This is an arithmetic progression, AP. But here, the difference, once you subtract, subtract, they give you different values. You don't have a common difference or a constant difference. But what do you have? Instead of subtracting, Let's try division. If we say the second term divided by the first term, that is 4 over 2, you should get 2. 8 divided by 4, you should get 2. 16 divided by 8, you should get 2. And 32 divided by 16, you should get 2. That is if I am correct. If I am not correct, do the right thing. Just know what I'm trying to do and help me to do it. 
Now, here, we do not have common difference. Since, once we divide this by this, like 4 over 3, no, 4 over 2 is the same thing as 8 over 4, and it is the same thing as 16 over 8. This is not common difference. This is common ratio. When you divide, you get ratio. When you subtract, you get difference. So, this has a constant ratio. That is what common ratio. Now, anytime you see or you hear common ratio, it means that we are no longer dealing with arithmetic progression. We are dealing with geometric progression. Now, in arithmetic progression, you will be asked to look for a particular term, or you can say n term. Yeah, we have just one, two, three, four, five. You agree with me that the next term will be six, right? If I say find the six term, this is the formula you use. You can simply solve and you will get six. Now, let's do something. We know that the next term is going to be six here. This formula will help you get particular term that you want. Let's say 10. Let's say we are looking for the sixth term. T6, N is 6, is equals A, is first term. First term here is 1, plus bracket. N is the particular term that we are looking for. This time around, the sixth term. So, 6 minus 1, divided by common difference. The common difference here is 1. So, multiply by common difference, that is 1. Sixth term is equals 1 plus 6 minus 1 is 5 5 times 1 is 5 so 1 plus 5 is equals 6 you see we've gotten a term so what if you are asked to look for 20th term 30th term of complex arithmetic progression you can't be writing them out one after the other you use this formula now if I say find the sum of the first five terms here, you simply add everything. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That is the sum of the first 5 terms. But a situation where you have complex numbers, baby values, and I say, find the sum of the first 20th term. You can't really write and be adding. It will take a lot of time. So, to look for the sum of values or of terms, you use this formula. Sum is equals n over 2, bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. N is always the number of term you are looking for. If you say the sum of the first 20th term, N will be 20. Now look at this. If you say you should find the sum of N term or of particular terms, but you do not have the common difference. If you have the last term, the last value, and the first value, you can look for the sum of particular values. So Fn is also N over 2A plus L. For GP, you will be asked to look for sum to infinity. Sum to infinity A over 1 minus R. That is see correct. That is sum to infinity. As you add values or you bring out values or progression, you need to sum them to infinity. So sum to infinity is A over 1 minus R. Then for GP, Particular number of terms, you can say find the 20th term, it's Tn is equals A R O N minus 1, which is the equivalent of Tn A plus N minus 1 T. Then sum of terms, sum of 20th term, blah, 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 in a GP is A brackets R O raised to the power of N minus 1 all over R O minus 1. R O is the common ratio. What if R O raised to the power of n is lesser than 1. If it is lesser, then you see 1 minus r raised to the power of n. Here is, raise the common ratio by the number of terms we are looking for and subtract from 1. Don't keep a negative value. That is the essence here. With this, you'll be very, very good to go. Don't need to stress or panic because we are going to solve questions in all of these many questions. And before we end this episode, let's look at this question. It is under consecutive, consecutive numbers, sum of consecutive numbers. We are going to find it in jump. There is high chance. This question says, the sum of four consecutive integers 
is 34. Find the list of these numbers. Find the list of these numbers. If I say something is consecutive, it means it is increasing by one. It is going up by a constant addition. So we have four consecutive numbers. Let's call the first number anything. You can call it A, B, L, N, whatever you want. But in mathematics, S has gained popularity. So you can call it S. Okay, let me call it N. The first number will be N, right? Since the number is increasing by 1, the second will be N plus 1. The third will also increase by 1. N plus 2. The fourth will be N plus 3. So these are the four consecutive integers. And we are told that their sum is 34. Meaning if you add N plus N plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 this will give you 34 so what is find the list of these numbers the list will simply be n because n plus 1 n plus 2 and n plus 3 will definitely be greater than n so find n is the same thing as find the list if you are told to find the biggest of the number you simply find the number first then you add 3 to the number. If it were 5 consecutive integers, it will end in 4. And the biggest number will be n plus 4. Sometimes, you'll be asked to look for average of the numbers. If you are looking for average of the numbers, since we have 4 consecutive numbers, most are able to get the number. So here will be the number. Here will be the number plus 1. Here will be the number plus 2. Here will be the number plus 3. Add everything and divide by 4 because we are dealing with 4 numbers you will get the average. In mathematics, learn to be open-minded. Don't just be fit to one way of doing things. Now, let's proceed. Here will simply be n plus opens up this bracket to have plus n plus 1 plus opens up here to have plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 is equal to 34. The reason we are finding here very sweet is that this is plus. If you were to be minus, obviously, everything here would have to change. 1, 2, 3, 4. four n plus n plus n plus n. That is 4n plus 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3, 6 is equals 34. 4n is equals 34 minus 6. 4n is equals um is this 28 i guess so n will be 28 divided by 4 28 divided by 2 that is uh 14 4 divided by 2 that is 2 14 divided by 2 is 7 so the least number or the smallest number is 7 and if you ask for the biggest number it will be 7 plus 3 10 the average of the numbers will be here is 7, here will be 8, here will be 9, here will be 10. So 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, everything divided by 4 is the average of the numbers. So this brings us to the end of this episode. From the next episode, we shall be answering questions under AP and GP. I trust you found this class interesting and don't forget to get the Flash Learner Jam app. I begin to play with a lot of questions. It is going to help you. See you in the next episode. Subscribe if you've not done that.